Hey church, thank you for tuning in to today's devotional. If you've been tracking along with us in the book of 1 John, you know that we've been breaking things down verse by verse as John is teaching his audience and us about Christian living. You know, today we're going to talk about how to love with our actions and how to walk in the favor of God. So let's read 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. It says, Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other, Let's show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and He knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence, and we will receive from Him whatever we ask because we obey Him and do the things that please him. You know, this passage is full of just a bunch of practical things that we can do to be more and more like Christ and to live as Christians and walk in God's favor. You know, just reading it, uh, it reminds me of three main topics that I see that can be broken down. Fruit, feelings, and favor. Let's talk about fruit for a second. Now, you might be thinking, I never heard the word fruit when you read that passage, and you're right. But I do know that the principle of bearing fruit is very much alive in this passage. You know, have you ever met somebody who is all talk? Like they love to talk the talk, you know, they're smooth with the talk, but they just don't walk the walk. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than somebody that says they're going to be one way and then lives a different way. You know, they say things that make them look wonderful, and then yet they don't even back it up with their actions. Well, John is saying in this passage that as Christians, we are to be people of action. We should not just talk about what we believe, but we should act on our beliefs and it should be the same. Our, our words and our actions should line up together. You know, we should mean what we say and we should reflect our beliefs by our actions. He says, let's not just say that we love each other. Anybody can just say they love each other, love somebody. But it says, let us show the truth by our actions. You know, this is where it reminded me of the topic of fruit. You know, Jesus mentions in the Gospels that as Christians, our lives should produce fruit because a, a tree is identified by the fruit that it produces. You know, you don't walk up into an apple orchard and look at an apple tree and wonder if it's an orange tree. That's just not, that just doesn't happen. And in the same way, people should look at your life and know, oh, he's a Christian. Oh, she's a Christian. Just because of how you act, what you say and what you act and how they line up together. You know, look what he says in verse 19. He says, our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So if we act like God, then it shows that we belong to God. You know, we have to be willing to ask ourselves and maybe even take it a step further and be willing to ask the close people in your life, am I producing fruit? Do people know that they know that they know that I'm a Christian? Do my actions line up with my words or am I doing completely different things? I just think it's so important for all of us to take inventory on that in our lives. <clears throat> but another topic we see in this passage is feelings. You know, he talks a lot about our feelings. In the middle of this uh, passage, it says that John, you, you know, he addresses the fact that we may feel guilty. You know, we may struggle with guilt and shame from our past, but God is greater than those feelings, which is such a relief to know. So what do we do when we feel bad about our old sin or even our current struggles? Number one, we need to recognize that we have been forgiven by God. 
You know, it's very possible to be forgiven by God and still walk around with guilt and shame and carrying all these burdens of of guilt and shame from our past. You know, a lot of times God can forgive us, but we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. And so I I thought this was so interesting. You know, in this verse, the word guilt means to condemn or blame. You know, it's very possible to be walking around as a child of God and to be walking around forgiven by God and walking around condemning yourself or blaming yourself for something that that you have done. Um, But it's so important for us as believers to be actively receiving God's forgiveness. You know, we have to know that we're forgiven. We have to believe that we're forgiven and receive it. We have to walk worthy of forgiveness because that's what Christ did on the cross for us. It's wor- we're worthy of forgiveness. And, you know, because he has forgiven you, we can rest in that and know that we can also forgive ourselves. You know, the second thing we can do with our feelings is remember that feelings are meant to be gauges, not guides. You know, it's okay to let your feelings expose where you're at, but you cannot let your feelings direct you. You know, our feelings don't get to dictate the truth of God. They should only point us in the direction of God. And over time, what's so refreshing is that His love and His Word, it, those things will transform our feelings, and, and it'll help us to be more in, and more in line with how he loves us. So our feelings, our goal is for our feelings about ourselves and myself to be more in line with what God says about me and how God feels about me. That's the ultimate goal. You know, lastly, let's talk about favor. You know, John ends this passage by telling us that because we have been forgiven, we can come to God with bold confidence. And then it says, he will answer us. You know, that, my friends, is the favor of God, that God hears us and he gives to us and he answers our prayers. You know, if we will just push aside those feelings of guilt and shame, it will enable us to come boldly to God with confidence. And, you know, if we go boldly to him and then we are obedient to him, he will be faithful to answer us. I love what the passage says. It says, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. You know, favor comes through obedience. So I have a question. Do you want God's favor in your life? Well, let me encourage you to strive every day to be obedient to him, to do whatever he asks, and to please God. You know, if we'll commit to line up our actions with our words, to push aside our feelings of guilt and shame, to come boldly to him and obey him, we will walk in the favor of God and we'll bear much fruit. You know, as we close, I just have one question for us to ponder today, and that is this. Are your feelings about yourself blocking what God really believes about you? Is it hard for you to believe what God says about you because your feelings are blocking the way? Ask God to help you see yourself the way that he sees you. You know, let's bear good fruit. Let's love others well by lining up our words with our actions. Let's forgive ourselves as Christ has forgiven us. Let's walk in obedience and let's truly experience the favor of our good and gracious God. Amen? Let's pray. God, we're just so thankful that the book of 1 John is painting a picture for us on how to be a true Christian. And God, we just ask that, Father, our words would line up with our actions. If we don't know how to do that, God, I pray that you just show us today. Show us the areas that need to change. And God, I just pray, Father, that we would walk in total obedience when you ask something of us. God, that we would walk in obedience and we would do what pleases you. And God, I just pray for favor today, that as we do all of these things, God, would you give us favor. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 